Hello everybody, we're going to get started on our next section, which is predicting products. I am recording this on my iPad so that I can write on the screen. Um, please excuse some of the writing. Um, it's not like I have an Apple Pencil, this is just with a stylus. Uh, but I think it will help with demonstrating how to actually uh, move things around to predict the products. So our objective here is to predict the products of a com um, combination. This is the same thing as a synthesis. Reaction, a decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, combustion, and acid base. So the six types that we've learned, we're going to use those to predict products of a reaction. The first thing is our synthesis re reaction. Remember, that's when you're combining two things together to make one compound. An example here would be CaCO2 producing CaO. This is not balanced. Just to note, we would need a 2 here and a 2 here for it to be balanced. Uh, we can predict the products if they are two elements. So with this, what we would look at is that magnesium generally has a plus two charge and nitrogen by itself will have a minus three charge. So remember when they form a compound, we drop and swap down here, drop and swap down here. So what we get is we get Mg3N2 as the compound. And then we need to balance, of course, so here, putting a 3 out here would make this a balanced equation. The other thing I want to note is that um, there are seven elements that when they are in their elemental form, they are written um, as a compound. So the seven elements that you need to remember are not just their element symbol, is hydrogen, Uh, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So those seven, when you see it, um, when you see oxygen being formed, it's not just O; it's always O two. If hydrogen's being formed, it's not just H; it's H two. So write these down, keep them noted. Um, it's probably the number one thing students forget when doing predicting products is that these seven just don't get written alone. Any other, other element on the periodic table, like magnesium, just gets written as its symbol from the periodic table. These are the seven that will have the subscripts included. So here, let's take a look. We'll do two examples. We have calcium. Remember, calcium is a plus 2. Chlorine, as a ion, is a minus 1. These come from your periodic tables. So here and here, we drop and swap, and we get CaCl2. And then you just need to make sure they're balanced in order for it to be finished. So one chlorine or one calcium on both sides, two chlorine. This one is balanced. Here we have aluminum and oxygen. Aluminum, remember, is a plus 3. Oxygen's a minus 2, so when you drop and swap, you get Al2O3. Now we need to balance this. To balance a 2 and 3, there's no way to get a 2 into a 3 or a 3 into 2, so we need to find a number that is similar, which would be 6. So putting a 2 here, 2 times 3 is 6. We would need a 3 here, 3 times 2 is 6. So now we have 6 oxygen on both sides. 2 times 2 is 4, so here we would have a 4 in front, and now we're balanced. Decomposition reactions, um, that means that the compound is breaking apart or falling apart. Um, there's two scenarios that you're going to have. The first one is where a compound breaks up into its elements. So these are just the elemental form of the... Um, two things that make up sodium chloride. You can also have them break up into compounds, but if that's the case, 
there's going to be something else needing to be given to you. This is the number one way that you're going to see decomposition reactions when you are asked to predict what the products will be. So you can predict the products if it is a binary compound, meaning it is just two elements. Um, it will fall apart into its individual elements. So like H2O will fall apart into hydrogen and oxygen. But if you remember from um, earlier, hydrogen and oxygen are one of those seven elements that are always written with a subscript two. So now we need to balance this. So I need a two here to get two oxygens on both sides. That increases my hydrogen to four, so I need a two here. Um, potassium and chlorine will break up into its elements, so that would be potassium and chlorine, Cl. But if you remember, chlorine is one of those seven that need a subscript, so we'll put a two here. We need to balance that out. A two here gives us two chlorines, but now we have two potassiums, so a two here. This is the type of decomposition reaction that you will most likely, um, probably about 99% of the time, you will be doing. If you're given them, they just break down into their individual elements. Now we do have one where we could have it break down into compounds. If that's the case, um, then you will need to be given, you must be given one of the products and then the other product will be just whatever's missing. So here we have nickel to carbonate. It breaks down into carbon dioxide and then whatever's missing. Whatever's missing is nickel and then see the C's used up by the carbon dioxide, two of the oxygens used up by the carbon dioxide, so that leaves one oxygen. So it produces nickel two, uh, nickel two oxide is our product. And now it's already balanced. Same down here, we have C2 or H2CO3, this is carbonic acid. CO2 is taking out, so what's left is hydrogen. And there's two of them and then one oxygen, so it produces water. So if you're ever given a situation where you have more than just two elements in the original compound, it most likely will break down into two separate compounds. And if you were to predict the products, you would have to be told, well, one of the products is carbon dioxide or one of the products is water. And then whatever's left over will be the other product in that reaction. All right, single replacement. Remember, single replacement you have where um, one element will replace another in a compound. You will typically have one element in one ionic compound. What you need to remember is that the like charges will replace each other. So like charges will replace each other. So if you look here on these two examples, sodium is a plus one, uh, potassium is a plus one, and chlorine is a minus one. Well, sodium and potassium are not going to form a bond together. Sodium is going to come in and take potassium's place. So you'll notice sodium is now bonded with the chlorine over here, and potassium's by itself. The same with the second equation. Fluorine's usually a minus one. Lithium's a plus one and chlorine's a minus one. Fluorine and chlorine are not going to come together and form a bond. Instead, lithium's going to bond with fluorine to produce lithium chloride, and then chlorine is kicked out on its own. Remember, chlorine's one of those seven elements that if it is alone, it will have the uh, two subscript with it. Again, this is probably the number one thing that students will forget when you are balancing. Um, and predicting products. All right, um, here we have another example of single replacement. Metals will replace other metals. So here we have K, uh, aluminum, and uh, nitrogen. So we have K, which is a plus one, aluminum is a plus three. Nitrogen's a minus three. So K is going to bond with N. So we get KN. 
This is a plus 1. This is a minus 3. So we drop and swap. This would be K3N plus, and then aluminum's just kicked out of here. Now, aluminum will not have a subscript. It is not one of those seven elements. So we will not have a subscript here. But what we do need to do is go through and balance. So to balance this, I would need to put a 3 in front of the K. Here's another example. We are going to have a plus 2 for zinc. Zinc's always a plus 2. Hydrogen's a plus 1. Chlorine's a minus 1. So in this one, the zinc is going to bond with the chlorine to form zinc chloride. Zinc's a plus 2. Chlorine's a minus 1. So drop and swap, we get ZnCl2. And then H is by itself, but H is one of those sevens that need to have the subscript when it's alone. So this would be a 2 here. Now we need to balance. With this, we have one zinc, one zinc, we have two hydrogen. So if we put a 2 out front here, that gives us two hydrogen and two chlorine. We're now balanced. Um, when we have a metal with water, like this down here, remember how we said we can write water as HOH. So now we have plus 1, minus 1, and then the OH group itself is, I'm sorry, uh, hydrogen is a plus 1. The OH group itself is a minus 1. So Na is going to bond with the OH. And then that leaves hydrogen by itself. But remember, hydrogen by itself will form um, a 2 there. Then we need to balance because we have 2 hydrogen here. So we'll have a 2 here. Gives us 2 OHs. We need to put a 2 here to get 2 OHs. But that increases our number of sodiums on the product side to 2. So we need to put a 2 here. So the steps for this is determining what type of reaction you're looking at and then how things are going to replace each other. Okay, single replacement again, um, the like charges or the same type of charge will replace each other. So here we have fluorine, which is usually a minus one, hydrogen's a plus one, chlorine's a minus one. So the fluorine and chlorine are not going to come together. The H and the F come together, and then chlorine's by itself. Again, chlorine is one that will have the two. Now we need to balance. This would be a two here, and we would have to put a two here, and everything balances out. The next one... Erase that because that's not right. All right, this is a minus one, plus one, minus one. We go back. The chlorine and bromine won't bond. Instead, it will be the potassium and the chlorine. So it would be KCl. They're a plus one, minus one. Plus bromine is out here. Remember, bromine is one of those that will have a two. So we need a two here and put a 2 here, and we're all balanced. So with single replacement, you need to look at charges. And you need to re-drop and swap on the product side. So keep that in mind with uh, single replacement. Double replacement, again, we have two things that are going to replace each other. Um, the reactants must be two ionic compounds or acids, and they'll usually be in solution. So here what we have is we have NaOH and we have FeCl3. Um, down below it's showing you that the Fe is a plus 3, chlorine is a minus 1, sodium is a plus 1, hydroxide, the group, is a minus 1. So... The positive from one will take the negative from the other. So Fe and OH will come together, and then the Na and the Cl will come together. And we get FeOH3 and then NaCl, and then them balanced out with the coefficients. So this one, again, you are going to need to check charges And then re-drop and swap 
on the product side. So make sure you keep those notes there. So here we're going to go through and do some practice. We have calcium, which is a plus two. Chlorine would be a minus one as an ion. Sodium would be a plus one as an ion. Hydroxide's a minus one. So we're going to see two things. Na will take Cl and calcium will take hydroxide. So we get NaCl plus one minus one that cancels out. Then we have calcium Ca and the OH is a minus so we have to have a two there. So we need to balance out. We'll put a two here and a two here and we get all balanced. Uh, the second example, calcium, or we have copper and calcium, um, I'm sorry, copper and chlorine. Copper will be a plus two, chlorine is a minus one. Remember, copper is one of those transition metals, so you have to look at the charge from the equation. Over here, potassium is a plus one, sulfur is a minus two. So if we look at what's going to actually bond with what, the Potassium takes the chlorine, the copper takes the sulfur. So what we're going to have here is KCl plus 1 minus 1, no drop and swap. We have copper and sulfur, it's a plus 2 and a minus 2, so no drop and swap there. All we need to do is balance by putting a 2 here to get 2 potassium and 2 chlorine. All right. Let's try another one. So here we have our potassium is a plus one, our OH is a minus one. We have iron, which is going to be a plus three because nitrate's a minus one. There's three of them. We need to balance out a total of negative three with a positive three. Um, so we have this negative one here. We know that the iron's going to take the OH and we know the K is going to take the NO3. So we get KNO3 plus 1 minus 1. Then we have Fe and OH. Fe is a plus 3. OH is a minus 1. So we're going to have this drop and swap here. Now we need to balance. So if we put a 3 here, oops. If we put a 3 here, we get 3 OHs, which matches the product side. But now we have three Ks, so we need a three in front of the K. And that gives us three NO3s that we need as well. All right, next one, we have a plus one and a minus two. And then we have a plus two and a minus one. Again, the plus of one will take the minus of the other. So we're going to see two switchings here. So we have NH4, F. NH4 is a plus one. F is a minus one. No drop and swap. BA is a plus two. SO4 is a minus two. So no drop and swap. Now we just need to balance. And by putting a two here, we have two NH4s and two Fs, which match the reactant side. So these take a little bit of time. You just need to remember to re-drop and swap. Okay. Okay, combustion. I always think combustion is the easiest one because the products are always the same no matter what. Uh, but students usually get confused with this. If you know it's combustion, you automatically write in CO2 and H2Os as a product. So you don't need to drop and swap. You don't need to move things around. It is a straight um, two products answer, and they're always the same two products. So here right away, I see it's combustion. It's a CH compound with oxygen. So I know it's CO2 and H2O automatically. I don't need to drop and swap, nothing like that. But then I do need to balance. So to balance this, I have my C, my H, my O. Here's 4, 10, and 2. Um, over here is 1, 2, and 3. 
So if I go through and I put my 4 here in front of the CO2, um, that will give me an even number of oxygens. But when I get to the hydrogen spot, to get 10, I have to put a 5. That puts my oxygen as an odd number. So we're going to have that situation here happen where the O2 number is not going to be a whole number. So I'm going to go through and just start with a 2 right away. So this will be 8. This will be 20. So to get 8 here, I'm going to put an 8. Um, to get 20 here, I'm going to put a 10. Now I have 16 plus 10, which is 26. So I need to get 26 oxygens over here. So 13 here times 2 is 26. So as you balance these more, you'll be able to see those types of um, issues come up where you just can't balance it right straight away. You may need to adjust what you're starting with. Okay, down here we have C6H12O6 plus O2. This here is a hydrocarbon and oxygen, so immediately it's CO2 plus H2O as the products. We need to balance CHO. We have 6, we have 12, and then we have 6 plus 2, we have 8. Then we have 1, 2, and 3 on the other side. So I'm going to put a 6 here, gives me 6. I'm going to put a 6 here, that gives me 12. So now I have 12 plus 6, which is 18. So I have 18 on this side. So I need 18 on this side, but 6 of them are in the original hydrocarbon, so I can't change that. So I need 12 plus 6 to give me 18. So what times 2 gives me 12? It's a 6. So here I have 6 times 12, or 6 times 2 is 12, plus 6 is 18, and now I'm balanced. All right, acid bases, um, they're similar to double replacement. In fact, they are a double replacement. They're just a special type. So we're going to look at the charges here. We have our hydrogen, which is a plus one, our chlorine's a minus one, sodium's a plus one, hydroxide's a minus one. So we are going to get NaCl. The plus here goes to the minus, this plus goes to the minus. So I have NaCl plus, and then HOH, which is H2O. And then this one's already balanced. You could leave this as HOH if you wanted to. Fine with that. Here we have H2SO4 plus MgOH2. H is a plus 1, SO4 is a minus 2 from our blue sheet. Magnesium is a plus 2, hydroxide is a minus 1. So the Mg and the SO4 and then the H and the OH. So we end up getting MgSO4. There is no drop and swap there because they balance. And then I'm going to leave this as the HOH since we need to... Um, balance out the two sides. So I have two OHs and two hydrogens, so putting a two here gets me all balanced. All right, so what happens when you start having mixed examples? The first thing you need to do is identify the type of reaction. So here <laughs> I have H2 and O2. They're both elements. So if they're both elements, this must be a synthesis. It's going to be two elements coming together. So this will be hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen is a plus one. Oxygen is a minus two. So we get H2O. We'll need a two here and a two here to balance. H2O, it's just by itself. So this here must be, sorry about that, uh, decomposition. So these are going to break up into its elements, H and O. Remember, these are two that need to have the two subscripts. So we need to balance two here and two here. The third one, we have an element and a compound. This is a single replacement, and I'm just going to use SR to indicate that. Single replacement. 
So we have a plus one, uh, plus two, a plus one, and a minus two. So this plus two and minus two are going to come together and just become ZnSO4. The hydrogen is going to be by itself, but remember, hydrogen is one of those sevens that, when written by itself, has a two subscript. And this is already balanced: one zinc, one zinc, one uh, one SO4 group, one SO4 two two hydrogen, two hydrogen. So identifying the types that they are first is going to be the most important. Okay, this one here, I have a compound and a single element. So this is also single replacement. We are going to have a plus one, minus one, and this is a minus one. So the K and the CL are going to come together. So we get KCL. Bromine's by itself, so just Br. But it's one of those elements that has uh, the two subscript. We'll need a two here to balance the Brs, and then we'll need the two here to balance the Ks and the Cls. This one we have a compound and a compound, so this is a double replacement. I'm going to use Dr to indicate that. We have a plus one, minus one. We have a plus one, minus one. So the Na and the NO3 and then the Cl and the AAG will come together. So we get NaNO3 plus Ag Cl. No drop and swap. Everything's balanced. A few questions on single replacement, double replacement. Does it matter which order I write the products? So I can write Ag Cl plus NaNO3. This does not matter. It's like an addition problem. It's like 1 plus 3 is 4 and 3 plus 1 is 4. Which compound you write first does not matter. In the actual compounds, does it matter what element you write first? Yes. The positive ion always gets written first. So I cannot write AgCl, ClAg because Cl is a minus 1. So in the actual compounds, the order matters, but what order you write the products on either side of the plus sign does not matter. So up here with the single replacement, I could have write, written Br2 plus 2KCl in that order, and that would have been fine. All right, the last one we have here, we have... CaOH2 plus H2CO3 or SO3. These are two compounds, so we could say it's double replacement, but we need to look at our compounds. We have a hydroxide and a hydrogen, so this is an acid base. Be careful of that. This is a plus two, minus one. We have a plus one, minus two. So we're going to have the plus and the minus come together here, and the plus and the minus come together here. So I'm going to have CaSO3 plus HOH or H2O. We need two on this side, so we need a two here. Two hydrogen, two OH groups. And I'm balanced. All right, and that's it for the notes. Um, <clears throat> these take a little bit longer. You have to be careful. You need to follow a process. Write down charges, write arrows, arrows to show what's going to what. Remember your diatomics, the ones that need to be written as um, twos. So Br2, I2, F2. These are huge. And then always remember to go back and balance. So the work this week is going to take you some time. I want you to uh, really make sure that you go through and try them. If you get frustrated, take a break, come back later, uh, reach out for help because it takes some time to do. But the more you do them, the easier it becomes. All right, until next time, everyone.